Welcome back. This time we have some leaf sucking action. Each time that I click, a vortex spawns that sucks up leaves inside of it. And if leaves go outside the bounds, then new ones just spawn in. So each time I suck one up, then our score increases by one here. This is good for tweening, which is when the vortex grows, as well as the leaves getting sucked in. So first, let's make a new 2D scene called Main. And within that, we want a spawner, which is just going to be a marker 2D, which we can rename to Spawner. Separate from this, let's make a new node. I'm going to be using the Control N shortcut from now on. So this is going to be a character body 2D. This is going to be the leaf that spawns. So as you can see, we need to add a collision shape. So let's do that. Collision shape added. We can set the shape as a circle. And let's also add a sprite to this. Now let's make a texture folder. Okay, the textures have been imported. Let's add a script to the sprite 2D. This is going to be how we'll make the texture be random. All right, so to do this, we say at export textures. This is going to be an array. Then inside of ready, we can just set our texture to be one of those randomly chosen from the array. Let's go ahead and save this. I'll just save it in the base folder. So now if we click on the sprite 2D again, even if it was already highlighted, you can see we have this array here. Let's add some elements to this. We just drag each of our images up there. Okay, and just to test, we can set the texture itself so we can see the bounds that we should set everything to. Let's expand our collision. Now I'm going to run it just this scene. Okay, so that seems a little bit large for a sprite. I know it's cut off. Um, depending on the sprite that you're using, and you might need to adjust this. So I'm going to adjust the size of my sprite. So I will set the scale to be 0.6. So we can adjust this as well. Now let's attach a script to the leaf. And of course, because it's a character body 2D, it starts us off with a ton of code. So we don't need gravity or these other things. We can take those out. All we need for the physics process is move and slide. Now let's add a ready function, the built-in one underscore ready. So let's set our velocity when this leaf first spawns so that it looks like it's being affected by the wind. So we'll just set a random range. In the example I showed before, I just used a negative 1.3 to positive 1.3 for both the x and y. But then at the end, we multiply that by 20. Whatever velocity the leaf spawns with, it'll just keep going in that direction. It won't just randomly switch directions. All right, above this ready function, let's track if this leaf is being sucked in by the vortex. So we can make is being sucked, and we can set that to false. And then we can use some getters and setters on this variable. So get, you can just return is being sucked. Then for a set to some new value, whenever somebody sets this variable. So if they're trying to set is being sucked to be true, so if new val, once we start being sucked, then we want the leaf to disappear after some time. So we'll just make a timer for that. So get tree.create timer. You can use whatever amount of time you want for this. I will use 0.6 or even better. We can make a variable for this suck time. And then when that times out, then we can connect up another function. Funk on suck complete. And just that so this stops complaining, we can connect this up here. Um, don't include the parentheses after. We want it to just have the function name. So let's go ahead and make a global script. This will be used for tracking the signal for when a leaf has been sucked up at all. Inside our main folder, we'll create a new script. Call this globals. And then in your project settings, which you can open here in auto load, the globals script that we just made, press add. So now this is accessible from everywhere. So we can, inside of this globals script here, leaf sucked up. And while we're here, we can also track the total number of leaves that have been sucked up. Okay, so back in the leaf object. Well, once the leaf has been sucked, then let's emit that globals signal. And we can also add one to the total number of sucked up leaves. And well, this leaf has been sucked up, so let's delete it, which we can do by doing self.q free. Oops. Oops, looks like we never saved main. Back inside of main, let's attach a script here. So this one we just call main. So from main, we're going to control where we spawn the vortexes, which we can call suckers. So let's make a variable for that that we can easily set in the inspector. So at export. Now let's make an input section. So that's underscore input. And let's add a new one here. So in your project settings, input map, let's add in a new action or click spot. And I'm just going to set this to be my left mouse button. So we can check here if input 
dot is action just press click spot that's when we want to spawn in one of the vortexes or a sucker as we called them so we can make a function for that so we want to instantiate one of those suckers from earlier so we can say new sucker instantiate that and to get the type hints we can just say it's a node 2d so it gives us general things so we can say the position of this new sucker so we can just make this part of the parameters so we will just pass in the mouse's position when we get there so let's add that child in and let's go ahead and put this up here so if we say spawn sucker spawn at the mouse's position so we can say get viewport get mouse position so let's run this now i will set this as my main scene for now just to make sure this works and say that and if you want spaces you do prints with an s then we just return so it doesn't do this code down here because we don't have the sucker yet so when i click you can see it says the position that i click so let's create the sucker now so let's make a new node for that this one is going to be an area 2d let's name this sucker add a collision shape again we'll use a circle let's also attach a sprite to the sucker let's go ahead and add in our circle spiral and we can set that as the texture you can use whichever texture you want as your vortex i will use this one for the scale let's make this 0.1 so when it first spawns in it will grow and then shrink again we don't want it to start out large we want it to grow let's save this and attach a script all right so the vortex spawns then it deletes itself so let's have a delay for that so let's set that up so we'll again create a timer because we want something to happen with delay and we can just connect up q free take out the extra parentheses that it puts okay this is where we get into the first tween so that's the animation for this thing so we'll say tween equals create tween so we'll say tween dot tween property and we want to affect ourself that is the sucker the property is the scale and we want to end up being two times the base size so let's do vector two 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 and the duration so we remember we want to grow the vortex and then shrink for a shorter amount of time but it's more sped up so we can say the float of the remove delay times two but then we divide by 3.0 so we spend the first two-thirds of the time growing and the last one-third shrink you can just duplicate this line here and here let's set this to 0 0.1 and 0 0.1 and instead of two-thirds you can just say float of this divide by three all right now let's suck up those leaves so we'll make another tween down here create tween now we want to suck up all the leaves at once so by default the tween runs sequentially but to make it parallel we can just say set parallel to true and there's a few other things we can add here so this is going to get a little bit long so we'll do backslash now we won't complain about having this extra indent we knew dot set trans for the transition speed up when we get towards the center then we have one more thing to change set the ease we want in out so it also makes us that it's slow at both ends but it's fast towards the middle all right so let's track if we've actually done anything with this tween like maybe it didn't suck up any leaves so we can say added any is false now because this is an area 2d we can say for node in it overlapping bodies node or this leaf as we know that it is dot is being suck that's not true then let's add some animation to it so normally with all these leaves if we just added them to the tween normally then that wouldn't work because then it would just suck one leaf then suck the next then suck the next but we want them to all be at the same time we'll do tween dot parallel dot tween property and this time we want to affect the node here property is its global position and we want that to end up being whatever our global position is and the duration we can just set that up here as the suck time as dot seven there we go but let's also say in here then if we did that then we did in fact add some then outside of the for loop if we did not add any then we don't need this tween it gives an error we have an empty tween if not added any then you can just do tween dot kill save that and back at the main scene let's set the sucker as the sucker right now let's make the spawner that actually spawns in these leaves so let's add the script for that and we want to have the leaf that we're going to spawn so remember we only have one of those scenes even though we have a lot of textures so export var leaf to spawn which is a packed scene then we also only want to spawn things within the bounds of the scene to make it so we only spawn things inside of the window we can say 
what the viewport bounds are. That's going to be a rect2. Now the viewport bounds, well, that's just equal to the get viewport rec. Now let's make the function actually spawn in these leaves. So func spawn leaves. So let's say if our child count is less than, let's say, 8, then we can spawn in a new leaf here. So the current leaf equal to leaf to spawn dot instantiate. Now let's set the position of this new leaf. So the current leaf dot position dot x. Let's set that equal to rand randy range which we can set the lower bound to be 40 and this is where we'll use those viewport bounds that we made so viewport bounds and that's the right side dot x uh, and we can subtract say 50 or even 100 from that and we can duplicate that for the y position and change this to be y and that to be y now well, let's actually add this new leaf so we can say add child well this current leaf now outside of the if statement let's make it so this keeps spawning every so often so let's just make a timer for that a tree dot timer and let's make it so it's kind of random here so let's say a rand f range so for a float value and we can say like every dot two to dot eight seconds and then when that times out then we can just connect up spawning leaves again remember don't include those extra parentheses and just to kick this off in the beginning let's spawn them at the start in the ready and of course let's set up this leaf to spawn inside of the spawner let's drag the leaf scene up so you'll notice when the leaves collide with each other, it kind of just spaz out. So let's go ahead and fix that. So open the leaf. So in the leaf scene, disable this mask so that it doesn't collide with itself. All right. And now that we have the sucker set up as well, we can attach that in the main scene. So let's take out this part from our main scene that we add temporarily. That might be a little bit too large. So let's change the size of our sucker. Uh, this is partially because my image is very large. We need to set this to be, let's say, a dot two. That looks kind of better. Um, you'll notice that currently the vortex is spawning on top of the leaves. So when we spawn in the sucker, let's add this move child. The order that things are drawn is based on the order that they enter the scene. This new sucker, let's just set it to position one, that it's like towards the beginning and then everything else gets drawn on top of it, or zero better yet. You'll notice it's behind them, but it does not seem to be intersecting with the leaves. So for debugging, we can turn on the invisible collision shapes. And it looks like we never set the size for the collision shape. I'm going to move this down. Now we actually see it. Now it should scale appropriately. Looks like the leaves slightly get sucked up, but it's not very fast. Inside of the sucker, we need to make sure that we set that this node is in fact being sucked. So it kept trying to restart its tween process, which we start out slow, so that's why it wasn't working. Okay, so in the leaf grip, we just forgot this line here. So outside of the if statement, we want to change is being sucked equal to the new value. So there's a few other things we can add to this game. Uh, you can see some of them go outside the bounds here. So we can fix that. So inside of the leaf section, we can set the viewport bounds, which is a rect2, as well as the starting position or starting spot, which is a vector2. So we can use the starting spot to make sure that we actually moved some amount of distance. We can set this in the ready section. So it's equal to self.position, whatever that was at the beginning. And the viewport bounds is equal to get to viewport rect. And if you want to have some random rotation on your leaves, you can just say self.rotation degrees is equal to some random number rand randy range from negative 180 to 180. So let's check if we actually go outside the bounds here. So we can just put this inside of a process. So if we're not enclosed by the viewport bounds, so if not viewport bounds dot encloses, we can just make a new rect here. So we want to check if it encloses our current position plus some small size. So we want to use our global position here. And for the size, we can just say by five. So if that's the case, then that means we went outside the bounds. So we can just delete ourselves with Q free. 
So let's see if that works. We got our eight leaves here. I suck them up and more spawned. And as this one goes out, then a new one spawned in its place. Cool. And if we want to add the label just to show our score, we can do that. So just add a canvas layer as well as a label to that. And you can set the font size to be around, say, 60 and just make it say score colon zero at the start. And we can use some similar text in the uh, script for this. So we can just call this score label. We can subscribe this to the global's leaf sucked up signal. Um, we'll just call this update text and we'll make that right now func update text and set the text equal to score colon. Then here's a trick. You can use this here and then globals uh, total leave leaves suck should have in this order set. It looked like it wasn't tracking the first leaf and now we should be good. We just sucked up three and it counts three. Nice. So that is about it for this leaf sucking game. Hope you enjoyed and thanks for watching.